Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. My name is Bill Prehoda. I'm a principal here with the Triton Group, um, and I am in charge of our technical services team. Jack Arnston, my business partner, is also on the webinar, and he will be helping with questions at the end of our presentation. Our agenda today uh, will focus on a few items that we believe will drive tremendous value to your district with respect to FileBound's document management system, the workflow, and the integrations with Skyward. As we indicated in our invitation, we will be focusing on our electronic onboarding solution, which leverages the ability to capture the data from the WeCan application and FileBound's electronic forms uh, to help provide a, a digital solution for the onboarding of new employees. However, uh, even though we are focusing on the onboarding solution, we thought it prudent to spend a little bit of time presenting the integration with Skyward and discussing other areas within the district that could benefit from FileBound and its various digital features. We believe that looking throughout the district for ways to leverage FileBound will drive even greater value and efficiencies to the district. Now, before we get going on the presentation itself, we have just a few housekeeping items we want to cover. First, um, you will be in listen-only mode. So with that said, uh, if you have any questions, don't shout them out like Jeopardy, uh, and we won't hear you anyway. Um, however, you can enter your questions into a chat area in the bottom lower right corner of your GoToWebinar panel. And then finally, we will be recording this presentation. So if you want to revisit it later or pass it along to another member of your team, uh, you can use the link that we'll send afterward as a follow-up. So let's get started. What we are going to show you today will take us from the point where a new hire selection is made and the WeCan form is brought down from the WeCan site as a PDF and placed in the folder for processing. When the capture process is complete, we'll show you how the document is placed in the workflow. Then the workflow will send an email and an offer letter to the new hire and uh, a web portal link, which will provide a means for the new employee hire to electronically fill out the forms and submit them. Should be to paper. Finally, throughout the process, the onboarding team will have the ability to review the forms, evaluate the progress, and when all the required documents have been filled and signed, they'll be able to transition to new hire documents from and the data from the onboarding project into the personnel file in FileBound. And all of that will be handled through an automated workflow. In fact, we um, actually automatically create the new Skyward ID for that new hire. First, let's take a look at the WeCan form. Um, after it has been processed by the document capture engine, as we can see, the data from the form has already been extracted and used to store the WeCan application and file bound. At this point, the onboarding workflow has been started and the application is actually sitting in an initial review step where a member of the onboarding team will review and prepare the file for further downstream processing. So when a workflow item is assigned, the user will be alerted by the workflow. Usually it's an email that's sent. And when they log into FileBound, they are presented with their workflow tasks. And then selecting any of the lines will actually display the documents in the viewer as well as any workflow tasks available to them to complete. When the team member opens the workflow, um, their first task will be to update the additional applicant's information, such as the employee type or the location, their starting date or their status, as well as being able to enter custom text into the document notes, which will be used when we create the offer letter. This is particularly valuable for new hires that might be wearing a number of um, additional hats, uh, such as a coach, um, where the information is unique 
to that new hire. And as a result, we want to include that unique information in the offer letter. Once the information has been updated and the custom text added to the document notes, the team member moves the file to the next step in the process, which is to generate the offer letter and send a welcome email uh, which contains the details of their new position as well as links to various resources uh, and the required forms that need to be filled out. For example, here is the welcome email which would also serves as the official offer letter. Um, a formal copy of the offer letter is also created and stored to the onboarding file for future reference. And as you can see, the offer details are included. For example, the placement, location, salary and pay, and the starting date, as well as a link to the eForms portal and the newly generated employee ID is provided. The ID is created by looking at the personnel file and file bound and accounts for avoiding the duplicates by adding the 001, the 002, et cetera, as needed to create the unique employee ID and yet still follow Skyward's naming convention. Now, when the employee clicks on the link, they are directed to the forms portal and presented with the required forms to fill out. If there is any form that's not required, the email will instruct them as to which e-forms those are and which not to fill out. And by the way, if you have any forms that may be unique to your district, we can help to bring those files in as well. Uh, for example, you might have a different pre-placement exam authorization form. We can easily help to create new e-forms or we can use existing PDF forms that might be specific to a provider, for example, an insurance carrier. Now, if the employee either clicks on the form name itself or on the open button, they will be taken directly to the e-form to fill it out. And uh, let's say, for example, they click on the employee information form or the employment information form. When that form is presented, the new hire enters their new employee ID and hits the tab key. The e-form then looks up all the available information from the onboarding file and pre-fills the form. For example, the new hire's name, address, email, phone number, etc. cetera. Um, the new hire then fills the balance of the information, including any of the required data as uh, indicated by the red asterisks on the form and then they click the submit button. They can also print a copy or clear the data and start over if needed. Here's another example of an electronic form that a new hire might fill out. Here, you will also notice that they have the ability to add supporting documents that may be needed for processing their file. In this example, uh, they may need to provide a copy of avoided check. However, instead of submitting the paper check like before, they can now take a picture of the VOIDA check with their phone or they can scan it on their desktop scanner or they can use a multifunction copier and take that image now and attach it to the eForm submission. Now when they click submit, not only is the ACH authorization information stored to the form and to the file, the check is also stored as a supporting document and is available to the onboarding team when needed. So again, no more paper is needed. As the onboarding workflow progresses, the onboarding team has access to all of the forms as they are completed and submitted. This allows the team to validate the information and possibly alert the participant to missing information or if they have any questions about the forms and the information that's been submitted. In addition, the workflow also monitors the submission and notifies the district staff if any forms are missing or not completed on time. Finally, when all required forms have been submitted and the onboarding team has had a chance to review the file and confirms its completeness, the workflow automatically moves the file from the onboarding project to the personnel file to actually complete the workflow process. 
So you know, as you can see, uh, there, this process eliminates the need to deal with paper when onboarding your new employees. And not only will you see the efforts associated with the end of season scanning of all your paper and into your personnel file eliminated, um, you'll also create a more timely method for processing the new employee and getting them into the fold, as it were, which is a great thing. Now, please remember that if you have any questions at all that come up at this part of the presentation, please submit them through the chat section of the GoToMeeting. We'll be happy to address them at the end of today's webinar. So now let's shift gears for just a moment and talk about the Skyward integration through Fabon Connect. Now we've presented this webinar a while back, but we felt it was so important to the value proposition of Filebound within your district that we thought it important to touch on this again. Now, beside the specific focus on the onboarding process, a more general theme of today's presentation is about creating efficiencies and overall integrations for the school district. The Filebound Connect integration with Skyward speaks directly to that. With Connect, users are able to work directly within Skyward and still have access to Filebound and the documents associated with their files in Skyward. Now, this reduces the need to sort of hop back and forth between the two systems to see the documents that might be on file for any of the employee's needs. For example, if you are in a student record section of Skyward, you can select a specific record. Filebound will automatically grab the Skyward data and performs a lookup in the student records project in Filebound. Now, if there are any records associated with that student, Filebound displays a found record alert in the bottom right corner of the screen. And if you click on that button, Filebound Connect panel opens and displays the list of documents and provides direct access, um, allowing the user to select the document and open it to be viewed. Now, if you happen to have a file, if you don't happen to have a file in Skyward, or you do happen to have a file in Skyward, but not a record in Filebound, it's easy to create that file right in Filebound. Just click the Create button and Connect will actually grab the data from Skyward and populate the Filebound file. And then it automatically saves the new file for you in Filebound. You are now ready to add the documents directly into Filebound through any of the methods that are available to us via Connect, whether that be to scan a document in, to import a document, or to simply drag and drop that document into Filebound. And one of those methods that we are talking about with drag and drop, just to show you, you simply open the file in File Explorer, find the document that you want, and then drag it over the correct separator. The file is uploaded to Filebound and is now accessible to anyone in the system. Now finally, moving away from HR, We'd like to share a few other areas within the district that could certainly benefit from leveraging Filebound storage, e-forms, and workflow capabilities. For example, students and their records. Uh, Filebound uh, can be leveraged to collect and store all the student documents in one secure environment. All documents relating to the student can be stored in Filebound and then through Filebound Connect and the Skyward integration, a user can access the file through the same method we just discussed. Filebound Connect will look for the file in Filebound that matches the student record in Skyward, and up pops the record found bubble, and then one click on the bubble, and the documents are ready for you to look at. IEPs are another great use of Filebound for storage, retrieval, workflow, e-forms, and perhaps 
in this scenario, most importantly, security. Leveraging Filebound, IEPs can be stored and into Filebound and then sent to an IEP workflow, for example, where the participants can see the documents that are stored, create new documents through the eForms module, for example, and then share those forms out to the team, all the while knowing that those documents are fully secured so only those individuals on the team can see them. Once the IEP is in place, it can be referenced and updated by the team no matter where they are. And by the way, if you ever need to transfer a file, let's say from one district, from your district to a new district, based on the move of a student, you can easily bundle up the IEP and then send it with the student for example, on a thumb drive, or you can distribute it securely to the new team at the new school. Pretty cool, right? So now, additionally, across most of our clients, the number one Filebound project workflow and eForms application is accounts payable. And that's across all of our clients, school districts and others. No more paper invoices floating around the district, um, sitting on somebody's desktop and then suddenly showing up either past the discount date if you need it, or worse, past due entirely. Similar to the way in which capture process and extracts the data from the WeCan form, we can also extract data from the vendor invoices. And then we can use that data to create an invoice record and file bound and then initiate a workflow to route that document through the invoice approval process. With Filebound's AP workflow, documents are routed electronically to the approver, coded, and once approved, can be output to a file format that can be imported into almost any accounting system. This provides you the opportunity to gain control, timeliness, and efficiencies that you just simply can't attain in a paper environment. And finally, an additional unique use case is board packets. Um, documents can be converted so that full text searches can be performed on the board packets and pertinent documents and data can be found in that search. Each board meeting can have a file created for in Filebound by date. School staff, board members can all have access to the digital documents in real time via their Filebound account. And once all the documents have been received, stored and reviewed in Filebound, a digital packet can actually be created and distributed for review. So you can see there's virtually no limit to how a district can leverage Filebound to drive greater efficiencies, storage, access, and security to their documents. Now, if you already have Filebound, perhaps today um, will help shed some light and help you to create some, have some creative fires um, that you can uh, take advantage of within your current uh, applications. And if you don't, perhaps, now is the time to look at Filebound. Uh, either way, uh, give us a call. We'd be happy to help you in any way that we can. So with that said, what we'd like to do now is open the floor for any questions. Um, by the way, with any of the time limits we have today, if by chance we don't get to all the questions, we will follow up with everyone and make sure that we get you the answers to your questions. So. Jack, um, what kind of questions do we have? Yeah, we got a few of them here, Bill. Uh, the first one is in regard to the IEPs. Uh, they said that you've mentioned using workflow for IEPs. Can parents or other people outside the district be active in the workflow? They can. And with the IEPs, that's really a pretty powerful opportunity there because what we can do is we can secure the project and the actual IEP itself 
down to just the team that's working on it. And then within that team, that can be um, administrative professionals within the district. It can be third outside, third party outside um, participants as well as the parents. So that's a great question, but it's also a great example what the IEPs are of how you can involve and engage others through Filebound to create a really integrated solution. Here's another one, Bill. It says, uh, if you add an employee and they decline the job, do we still have a record for them? Do we need to manually delete them? Yes, you do have a record. Um, and based on your own, uh, as, a, as a school district, based on your own uh, policies, if somebody declines it right now, we keep it in the onboarding project and we can set it to be kept indefinitely, or we can set up processes that will allow you to delete them and call out that list over time. Um, so the answer is we can keep it for you, that's our default. If you wish to delete them over time, we can set up processes to allow that to clean up the onboarding. Um, but yes, only those that accept the position are moved over to the personnel file and those that do not accept the position are sort of stored as archived for as long as you wish to keep it. Another one on the employee files that said you recreated an employee file through your onboarding demonstration using electronic forms. Can you save other types of documents in that employee file folder and how difficult is it to do that? Well, the answer is yes, you can. And difficulty level is about a, a one, maybe a half. It's very easy to get documents into Filebound, whether we are scanning, file importing, drag and drop. There's a variety of different methods to get documents into the system. And within the onboarding, what happens oftentimes is that you have additional supporting documents. So you have your primary WeCan application, you have your electronic forms, which are required and filled out and stored, and then you have your supporting document. The cancel check is an example of a supporting document. It's in the file, it's linked to the e-form that was filled out, but it is stored as a separate image as a supporting document. So absolutely, you can do that. So Bill, what are some examples of some of the file types that you can save to the folder? Um, Filebound stores all of its documents in native file format. That means that if you have a Word document, it saves it as a Word document, and Excel document is saved as an Excel document. So across the board, typically we will see Word, Excel, sometimes PowerPoints because they're a Microsoft product. It certainly goes in easily enough. TIFF images, JPEGs, PDFs, really any file format is stored as its native format in Filebound. And then based on that file format, it'll be displayed back to the user in the viewer. Or if it is an odd or unique enough file format, then it will simply launch that unique viewer when you retrieve that particular document. Um, another one in regards to, actually this is on accounts payable. It says, uh, if we don't want approvals in file bound, does it skip this step and just simply archive the invoice or do we need to have approvals in uh, in place from the ap standpoint if we if you wish to do your approvals somewhere else we can store those documents in filebound without a problem and we would just simply not have the approval element of the workflow enabled and therefore if you're in skyward for example and you have an, a document that um, the, the invoice itself contains all the data in Skyward. Um, because of Connect, when you're on that transaction in Skyward, it will link that invoice number to the invoice number in Filebound, and that bubble that I was talking about in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen will appear telling you that there is an image associated in Filebound with this invoice transaction that you're looking at in Skyward. So that's a pretty easy process for us to put in place. And I think that's it, Bill. I think that's all the questions that we had. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you again, everyone, for your participation in today's webinar. Uh, we wish you all a wonderful holiday season. And if we can be of any help, please let us know.
Thanks a lot and have a great day.